Hello and welcome back to Nath Supercoach for 2024. In this video, we're going to look at the captain's loophole, which is one of the most popular strategies employed by supercoaches throughout the season. In this video, we're going to learn, amongst other things, what it is, how does it work, things you must do for it to work, and some other considerations that you need to think about when employing this strategy. If you're new to the channel, please hit like and subscribe. At the time of recording of this video, all the community games have now finished. We've got some videos coming out on that and also for some rookies, where things sit. We're only a week before round zero. So plenty of content to come. Make sure you don't miss any of it. Hit the like and subscribe button. Okay, let's get started. So what is it? What is the Supercoach Captain's Loophole? Okay, it's a tactic used by Supercoach players every week to obtain the best possible captain score. Okay, it allows a second shot at getting a good captain score and it allows coaches to lock in a good captain score early in the round to offset any potential injuries or low scoring output from your original captain who plays later in the round. Okay, so how does it work? Well, super coach, you have a captain and a vice captain each week. The player that has the captain or the C on them gets their score doubled. Okay, so this is where the loophole comes in. If all of a sudden you put the captain on a player that's not playing, how can you double zero? thing is you can't. What happens is the game then automatically reverts to your vice captain or the player that you have the VC on and their score gets doubled. So here are two common scenarios that usually occur. This is how we can do it. I'll speak about the theory and then I'll give you a practical example. So two common scenarios. The first one, your vice captain, the player you've got the VC on, plays earlier in the round and scores 175 or 120 in this example. Okay, they score really well 120 is usually the threshold we go with. They score really well and you want to get that score doubled. You don't want to risk it on a player who's playing on Sunday afternoon. Just in case they get injured, there's a role change, they get concussed, etc, etc. So you want to lock it in early to try and get some ground over your opponents. That's when you use the captain's loophole and your vice captain's score is then doubled. 120 times 2 gives us 240. The okay. second scenario that happens is your VC player does not score that well. So you go, yeah, that's no good. Still, it's business as usual. You put a captain, the captain on a player that you think is going to score well towards the end of the round, and their score gets doubled. Okay, so it's a little bit more riskier because you've had the first chance, but this is where this strategy comes in. Okay, all right. So let me give you now a practical example and show you on the screen so you know exactly how to do this for yourself. Okay, so here we go. This is how we do the captain's loophole. All right. So I'm looking at my side now. It's the start of the round. Okay, so I think so. Let's say, for example, Max Gorn's playing in, on Thursday night. Okay, now I think he's going to do really, really well. So I'm going to put the vice captain on Max Gorn. Let me go over to the V here, and it will turn blue. So he's my vice captain. So I watch the game, and I see how Max Gorn scores. Let's say Max Gorn scores over that 120 threshold. I say, ah, I want to take that. I want to get that score doubled. Let's say he goes 150. Okay, he really goes well. 150, I want to double that to 300. I'm not going to risk it on any other player. Okay, because you just don't know what's going to happen in Supercoach. You just don't know when the Supercoach gods get going. Okay, so I want to take Max Gorn's 150. How do I do that? Here's how. You place, ideally, a non, well, it has to be, a non-playing player on the field, and you put the captain on them. This is where a strategy of having a floating donut, almost a permanent floating donut for the season comes in. So Vigo Vicentini is an Essendon Ruckman I've got in my R3 slot on the bench, okay? Ruck 3, Ruck 1, Ruck 2, Ruck 3. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sub, so I press the S, substitute him for Brody Grundy. It's very important that you put it on the same line, okay? That, so you don't get any confusion and all sorts of things like that. So that's the first step. We need to then put the captaincy on Vigo Vicentini. And then we need to put the emergency, or the E, on Brody Grundy. Okay, so very important before we move on. For this to work, your captain option that you're going to put on the field to get their zero, in this case Vicentini for Essendon, needs to play after your vice captain has played. So this loophole works when you have a vice captain play early in the round, Thursday night or a Friday night, depending on what the fixture is doing, they score really well, then you use your floating donut, who is playing a little bit later on in the round, okay, you put them on as captain, and you put the captain on them there, so what's going to happen is Max Gorn will score 150 hypothetically, and then Essendon may play on the Saturday afternoon, right, 
and Vicentini isn't selected because he's a VFL Ruckman for us, so he's going to score zero. That's when Max Gorn's score gets doubled to 300. Now, the next thing, to make sure you don't miss out on your Ruck 2's score, because you've moved them to the bench, you still want their score because they're your second Ruckman, right? You need to put the emergency on them. So what happens with the emergencies is any player in a position uh, on the field doesn't play, score zero, DNP does not play, then you can only have one emergency on each line. That's the score that happens. All right. So while we're here, let's say Caulfield is a late withdrawal, doesn't play, and I've got the emergency on Toby Pink. Okay. So Caulfield's got a zero. I go, ah, oh, bloody hell, I'm going to miss his score. Well, no, I'm going to whatever Toby gets. That's the score. That's going to come onto the field. That's going to count for my on-field score because I've got Toby Pink as the emergency. Okay. You can only have one emergency per line. That's getting a little bit off track. We can talk about rookie loopholes as we go forward, but the captain's loophole is essentially this. Let's go through one more time so there's uh, no confusion and you understand what we need to do. So here's my scenario. I think Max Gorn is going to score really well on Thursday night. He plays early in the round. I think he's going to go 150, and let's say he does go 150. Right, I'm going to bank that 150 now. I'm not going to risk it on a Butters or anyone else. I want to take that score now. So he's my vice captain, so we're, we're off to a good start. We need to move from the bench, which was Vicentini, move him onto the field and put the captaincy on him. So this player that you put the captaincy on, who is non-playing, needs to play after Max Gorn or whoever your vice captain is, has played. So let's say Thursday night, Saturday afternoon for this to work. doesn't necessarily matter with that because he's an emergency. Um, and then to make sure you get Brody Grundy or Marshall or English or whoever your second ruck is, you move them to the bench, put the E on them, so that will go purple. That's the emergency. That means on this particular ruck line, any players that do not play, you will get their emergency score. So some considerations. Again, you've got to pick a vice captain who plays early in the round, Thursday night, Friday night. All right, pretty self-explanatory. This gives you the option to use a captain on another player who plays later in the round. So if I use this strategy, often what I've done is I've picked a vice captain that plays Thursday night or Friday night. If they haven't performed well, then I'll usually go with a player in my team that plays Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. I'm very wary of picking captains on a Sunday because um, sometimes you just don't know what the, the super coach gods have in store for you, right? It's all sorts of things can happen. You don't want... It's just the worst thing that can happen, all right? A threshold. I think 120 super coach points is the common used threshold as a trigger to use this loophole. It doesn't have to be 120. If a player scores 119 and you think, mm, my other two players that I thought I was going to have as captain, uh, they're under injury clouds or they're against a difficult opposition, they might get tagged, etc. Eh, maybe I'll lock in 119. It's only one point less than 120. And I've done that plenty of times before. Um, Anything less than sort of 110, I, I would roll the dice on an, on another captain because it's more often that the captain you were going to put on originally uh, will score more than 110 because you've picked them for that reason, etc. All right, thanks very much for watching. Trust that that helped you understand the captain's loophole if you're new to this game. It's a little bit more in-depth than the one I did a couple of years ago. I uh, just wanted to sort of make it a little bit more um, up-to-date for 2024. Not that the strategy has changed, but just as we're getting closer to the season, just a bit of a reminder as to how this works. Please let me know in the comments section if you have any more questions. I'm more than happy to help you. And please hit the like and subscribe button. As I I've recorded this video the Sunday night, all right? This is after all the community games. So we've got plenty of stuff to talk about before round zero and then before round one kicks off. Thanks very much for watching. Trust this helped and talk to you soon.